Israel multiplies in Egypt. Now these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob. They came, each one with his household. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin. Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. All the people who descended from Jacob were seventy people, but Joseph was already in Egypt. And Joseph died, and all his brothers and all that generation. But the sons of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly, and multiplied, and became exceedingly mighty, so that the land was filled with them. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of the sons of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, otherwise they will multiply, and in the event of war, they will also join those who hate us, and fight against us and depart from the land. So they appointed taskmasters over them to oppress them with hard labor. And they built for Pharaoh storage cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they oppressed them, the more they multiplied and the more they spread out, so that they dreaded the sons of Israel. The Egyptians used violence to compel the sons of Israel to labor. And they made their lives bitter with hard labor in mortar and bricks and at all kinds of labor in the field, all their labors which they violently had them perform as slaves. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra, and the other was named Pua. And he said, When you are helping the Hebrew women to give birth and see them upon the bits too, if it is a son, then you shall put him to death. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them, but let the boys live. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing, and let the boys live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. For they are vigorous, and give birth before the midwife can get to them. So God was good to the midwives, and the people multiplied, and became very mighty. And because the midwives feared God, he established households for them. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born, you are to throw into the Nile, but every daughter, you are to keep alive the birth of Moses. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and gave birth to a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got him a papyrus basket and covered it with tar and pitch. Then she put the child in it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. And his sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the Nile, with her female attendants walking alongside the Nile. And she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave woman and she brought it to her. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the boy was crying. And she had pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a woman for you who is nursing from the Hebrew women, so that she may nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go ahead. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. And she named him Moses, and said, Because I drew him out of the water. Now it came about in those days, when Moses had grown up, that he went out to his fellow Hebrews and looked at their hard labors. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his fellow Hebrews. So he looked this way and that, and when he saw that there was no one around, he struck and killed the Egyptian, and hit his body in the sand. Now he went out the next day, and behold, two Hebrews were fighting with each other. And he said to the offender, Why are you striking your companion? But he said, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and said, Surely the matter has become known. Moses escapes to Midian. When Pharaoh heard about this matter, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the presence of Pharaoh and settled in the land of Midian and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Then the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. When they came to their father Yul, he said, Why have you come back so soon today? They said, An Egyptian saved us from the shepherds, and what is more, he even drew water for us and watered the flock. So he said to his daughters, Where is he then? Why is it that you have left the man behind? Invite him to have something to eat. And Moses was willing to live with the man. And he gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses.
Then she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jashom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. Now it came about in the course of those many days that the king of Egypt died. And the sons of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out. And they cry for help because of their bondage ascended to God. So God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God saw the sons of Israel, and God took notice of them the burning bush. Now Moses was pasturing the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not being consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burning up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their outcry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. And now, behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. The mission of Moses. And now come, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Assuredly I will be with you, and this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, This is what you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am as sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, This is what you shall say to the sons of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is the name for all generations to use to call upon me. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I am indeed concerned about you and what has been done to you in Egypt. So I said, I will bring you up out of the oppression of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then they will pay attention to what you say. And you with the elders of Israel will come to the king of Egypt, and you will say to him, The Lord the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. So now, please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not permit you to go, except under compulsion. So I will reach out with my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles which I shall do in the midst of it. And after that he will let you go. I will grant this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be that when you go, you will not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask her neighbor and the woman who lives in her house for articles of silver and articles of gold, and clothing. And you will put them on your sons and daughters. So you will plunder the Egyptians. Moses given signs. Then Moses said, What if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? For they may say, The Lord has not appeared to you. The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A staff. Then he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it turned into a serpent. And Moses fled from it. But the Lord said to Moses, Reach out with your hand and grasp it by its tail. So he reached out with his hand and caught it, and it turned into a staff in his hand, so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. The Lord furthermore said to him, Now put your hand inside the fold of your robe. So he put his hand inside the fold, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. Then he said, 
put your hand inside the fold of your robe again. So he put his hand into the fold again, and when he took it out of the fold, behold, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. So if they will not believe you nor pay attention to the evidence of the first sign, they may believe the evidence of the last sign. But if they will not believe even these two signs nor pay attention to what you say, then you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. And the water which you take from the Nile will turn into blood on the dry ground. Then Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither recently nor in time past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. For I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. But the Lord said to him, Who has made the human mouth? Or who makes anyone unable to speak or deaf, or able to see or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now then go, and I myself will be with your mouth, and instruct you in what you are to say. But he said, Please, Lord, now send the message by whomever you will. Aaron to be Moses' mouthpiece. Then the anger of the Lord burned against Moses, and he said, Is there not your brother Aaron the Levite? I know that he speaks fluently. And moreover, behold, he is coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be overjoyed. So you are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I myself will be with your mouth in his mouth, and I will instruct you in what you are to do. He shall speak for you to the people. And he will be as a mouth for you and you will be as God to him. And you shall take in your hand this staff, with which you shall perform the signs. Then Moses departed and returned to his father-in-law Jethro, and said to him, Please, let me go, that I may return to my brothers who are in Egypt, and see if they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Now the Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all the men who were seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, and mounted them on a donkey, and returned to the land of Egypt. Moses also took the staff of God in his hand. And the Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders which I have put in your power. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord says, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I said to you, Let my son go so that he may serve me. But you have refused to let him go. Behold, I am going to kill your son, your firstborn. But it came about at that overnight encampment on the way, that the Lord met Moses and sought to put him to death. So Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and threw it at Moses' feet. And she said, You are indeed a groom of blood to me. So he left him alone. At that time she said, You are a groom of blood, because of the circumcision. Now the Lord said to Aaron, Go to meet Moses in the wilderness. So he went and met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him, and all the signs that he had commanded him to do. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the sons of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses. He then performed the signs in the sight of the people. So the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about the sons of Israel and that he had seen their affliction, they bowed low and worshipped Israel's labor increased. And afterward Moses and Aaron came and said to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Let my people go so that they may celebrate a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and besides, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please, let us go a three days journey into the wilderness so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, otherwise he will strike us with plague or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, Why do you let the people neglect their work? get back to your labors. Again Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are now many, and you would have them cease from their labors. So the same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters over the people and their foremen, saying, You are no longer to give the people straw to make bricks as previously. Have them go and gather straw for themselves. But you shall impose on them the quota of bricks which they were making before. You are not to reduce any of it. Because they are lazy, for that reason they cry out, let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let the labor be heavier on the men, and have them work at it so that they will pay no attention to false words. So the taskmasters of the people and their foremen went out and spoke to the people, saying, This is what Pharaoh says, I am not going to give you any straw. You go, get straw for yourselves wherever you can find it. But none of your labor will be reduced. So the people scattered through all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. And the taskmasters pressed them, saying, Complete your work quota, your daily amount, 
just as when you add straw. Moreover, the foremen of the sons of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and asked, Why have you not completed your required task of making bricks, either yesterday or today, as before? Then the foremen of the sons of Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why do you deal this way with your servants? There is no straw given to your servants, yet they keep saying to us, Make bricks. And behold, your servants are being beaten. But it is the fault of your own people. But he said, You are lazy, very lazy. For that reason you say, Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. So go now and work. For you will be given no straw, but you must deliver the quota of bricks. The foremen of the sons of Israel saw that they were in trouble, since they were told, You must not reduce your daily amount of bricks. When they left Pharaoh's presence, they met Moses and Aaron as they were waiting for them. And they said to them, May the Lord look upon you and judge you, because you have made us repulsive in Pharaoh's sight and in the sight of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to kill us. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought harm to this people? Why did you ever send me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done harm to this people, and you have not rescued your people at all. God promises action. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For under compulsion he will let them go, and under compulsion he will drive them out of his land. God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. And I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them, to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as strangers. Furthermore I have heard the groaning of the sons of Israel, because the Egyptians are holding them in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Say, therefore, to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the labors of the Egyptians, and I will rescue you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm, and with great judgments. Then I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the labors of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. So Moses said this to the sons of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses on account of their despondency and cruel bondage. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go, tell Pharaoh king of Egypt to let the sons of Israel go out of his land. But Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, Behold, the sons of Israel have not listened to me. How then will Pharaoh listen to me, as I am unskilled in speech? Nevertheless, the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron and gave them a command concerning the sons of Israel and Pharaoh king of Egypt, to bring the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt. The heads of Israel. These are the heads of their father's households. The sons of Reuben, Israel's firstborn, Hanak and Paulu, Hezrin and Kami. These are the families of Reuben. And the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jemin, Ohad, Chin, Zahar, and Shaul the son of a Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simeon. And these are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generations, Chishan, Kohath, and Merari. And the length of Levi's life was 137 years. The sons of Jishan, Libni and Shemir, according to their families. And the sons of Kohath, Amram, Azar, Hebron, and Uzeel. And the length of Kohath's life was 133 years. And the sons of Merari, Mali and Mashi. These are the families of the Levites according to their generations. Now Amram married his father's sister Chebd, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the length of Amram's life was 137 years. And the sons of Azar, Kara, Nephek, and Zikri. And the sons of Uzeel, Mishal, Eltzaphane, and Sitri. Aaron married Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab, the sister of Nashan, and she bore him Nadab and Abihu, Eliza and Etamar. And the sons of Kara, Asur, Elkanah, and Abiazath. These are the families of the Korahites. Now Aaron's son Eliza married one of the daughters of Putail, and she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of the father's households of the Levites according to their families. It was the same Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, Bring out the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their multitudes. They were the ones who spoke to Pharaoh king of Egypt about bringing out the sons of Israel from Egypt. It was the same Moses and Aaron. Now it came about on the day when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord. Say to Pharaoh king of Egypt all that I say to you. But Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am unskilled in speech. 
How then will Pharaoh listen to me? I will extend my hand. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. As for you, you shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall speak to Pharaoh that he let the sons of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, so that I may multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. When Pharaoh does not listen to you, I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring out my armies, my people the sons of Israel, from the land of Egypt by great judgments. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I extend my hand over Egypt and bring out the sons of Israel from their midst. So Moses and Aaron did this. As the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses was eighty years old and Aaron eighty-three, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Aaron's staff turns into a serpent. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, when Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Work a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, so that it may turn into a serpent. So Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh, and so they did, just as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron threw his staff down before Pharaoh and his servants, and it turned into a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they too, the soothsayer priests of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. For each one threw down his staff, and they turned into serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Water turned into blood. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning just as he is going out of the water, and position yourself to meet him on the bank of the Nile. And you shall take in your hand the staff that was turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, The Lord the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, so that they may serve me in the wilderness. But behold, you have not listened up to now. This is what the Lord says, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I am going to strike the water that is in the Nile with the stuff that is in my hand, and it will be turned into blood. Then the fish that are in the Nile will die, the Nile will stink, and the Egyptians will no longer be able to drink water from the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and extend your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, over their streams, over their pools, and over all their reservoirs of water, so that they may become blood. And there will be blood through all the land of Egypt, both in containers of wood and in containers of stone. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. And he lifted up the staff and struck the water that was in the Nile in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the water that was in the Nile was turned into blood. Then the fish that were in the Nile died, and the Nile stank, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. And the blood was through all the land of Egypt. But the soothsayer priests of Egypt did the same with their secret arts. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Then Pharaoh turned and went into his house with no concern even for this. So all the Egyptians dug around the Nile for water to drink, because they could not drink from the water of the Nile. Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile frogs over the land. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go, so that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I am going to strike your entire territory with frogs. The Nile will swarm with frogs, which will come up and go into your house, and into your bedroom and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants, and on your people, and into your ovens and kneading bowls. So the frogs will come up on you, your people, and on all your servants. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Extend your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the streams, and over the pools, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron extended his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. However, the soothsayer priests did the same with their secret arts, making frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Plead with the Lord to remove the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, so that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, The honor is yours to tell me. When shall I plead for you and your servants and your people, that the frogs be destroyed from you and your houses, that they be left only in the Nile? Then he said, Tomorrow. So he said, May it be according to your word, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will depart from you and your houses, and from your servants and your people they will be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs which he had inflicted upon Pharaoh. 
the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, the courtyards, and the fields. So they piled them in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. The Plague of Insects Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Extend your staff and strike the dust of the earth, so that it may turn into gnats through all the land of Egypt. They did so. And Aaron extended his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and there were gnats on every person and animal. All the dust of the earth turned into gnats through all the land of Egypt. The soothsayer priests tried with their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on every person and animal. Then the soothsayer priest said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh, as he comes out to the water. And say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go, so that they may serve me. For if you are not going to let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and on your servants and on your people, and into your houses. And the houses of the Egyptians will be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they live. But on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people are living, so that no swarms of flies will be there, in order that you may know that I, the Lord, am in the midst of the land. I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign will occur. Then the Lord did so. And thick swarms of flies entered the house of Pharaoh and the houses of his servants, and the land was laid waste because of the swarms of flies in all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, It is not permissible for us to do so, because we will sacrifice to the Lord our God that which is an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice that which is an abomination to the Egyptians before their eyes, will they not stone us? We must go a three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, just as he commands us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go, so that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. Plead for me. Then Moses said, Behold, I am going to leave you, and I will plead with the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. Only do not let Pharaoh deal deceitfully again in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses left Pharaoh and pleaded with the Lord. The Lord did as Moses asked, and removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and he did not let the people go. Egyptian livestock die. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and speak to him. This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, Let my people go so that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will come with a very severe plague on your livestock which are in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the herds, and on the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing will die of all that belongs to the sons of Israel. And the Lord set a definite time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. So the Lord did this thing on the next day, and all the livestock of Egypt died. But not one of the livestock of the sons of Israel died. And Pharaoh sent men, and they learned that, behold, not even one of the livestock of Israel was dead. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. The Plague of Boils Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourselves handfuls of soot from a kiln, and Moses shall toss it toward the sky in the sight of Pharaoh. Then it will become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and will turn into boils breaking out with sores on every person and animal through all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from a kiln, and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses tossed it toward the sky, and it became boils breaking out with sores on every person and animal. The soothsayer priests could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils were on the soothsayer priests as well as on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not listen to them just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, Let my people go, so that they may serve me. For this time I am going to send all my plagues on you and your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For had I now put out my hand and struck you and your people with plague, you would then have been eliminated from the earth. But indeed, for this reason I have allowed you to remain, 
in order to show you my power and in order to proclaim my name throughout the earth. Still you exalt yourself against my people by not letting them go. The Plague of Hail Behold, about this time tomorrow, I will send a very heavy hail, such as has not been seen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. So now, sent word, bring your livestock and whatever you have in the field to safety. Every person and animal that is found in the field and is not brought home, when the hail comes down on them, will die. Everyone among the servants of Pharaoh who fear the word of the Lord hurried to bring his servants and his livestock into the houses. But everyone who did not pay regard to the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. Now the Lord said to Moses, Reach out with your hand toward the sky, so that hail may fall on all the land of Egypt, on every person and animal, and on every plant of the field, throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses reached out with his staff toward the sky, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire ran down to the earth. And the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. So there was hail, and fire flashing intermittently in the midst of the hail, which was very heavy, such as has not occurred in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck everything that was in the field through all the land of Egypt, from people to animals. The hail also struck every plant of the field, and shattered every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the sons of Israel were, was there no hail. Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron, and said to them, I have seen this time. The Lord is the righteous one, and I and my people are the wicked ones. Plead with the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. And I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I go out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease and there will no longer be hail, so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley were ruined, for the barley was in the ear and the flax was in bud. But the wheat and the spelt were not ruined, for they ripen late. So Moses left the city from his meeting with Pharaoh, and spread out his hands to the Lord. And the thunder and the hail stopped, and rain no longer poured on the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had stopped, he sinned again and hardened his heart, he and his servants. So Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not let the sons of Israel go just as the Lord had spoken through Moses the plague of locusts. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, so that I may perform these signs of mine among them. And that you may tell in the presence of your son, and of your grandson, how I made a mockery of the Egyptians, and how I performed my signs among them, so that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, so that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your territory. And they will cover the surface of the land, so that no one will be able to see the land. They will also eat the rest of what has survived, what is left to you from the hail, and they will eat every tree of yours which grows in the field. Then your houses will be filled with them together with the houses of all your servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, something which neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen, from the day that they came upon the earth until this day. And he turned and left Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the people go, so that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is destroyed? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God. Who specifically are the ones who are going? Moses said, We shall go with our young and our old. With our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds we shall go, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. Then he said to them, So may the Lord be with you, when I let you and your little ones go. Watch out, for evil is on your mind. Not so. Go now, but only the men among you, and serve the Lord, since that is what you desire. So they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out with your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, so that they may come up on the land of Egypt and eat every plant of the land, everything that the hail has left. So Moses reached out with his staff over the land of Egypt, and the Lord directed an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. The locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled in all the territory of Egypt. They were very numerous. There had never been so many locusts, nor would there be so many again. For they covered the surface of the whole land, so that the land was darkened. And they ate every plant of the land and all the fruit of the trees that the hail had left. 
Therefore nothing green was left on tree or plant of the field throughout the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh hurriedly called for Moses and Aaron, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. So now, please forgive my sin only this once, and plead with the Lord your God, that he would only remove this death from me. Then he left Pharaoh and pleaded with the Lord. So the Lord shifted the wind to a very strong west wind, which picked up the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not one locust was left in all the territory of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go. Darkness over the land. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out with your hand toward the sky, so that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even a darkness which may be felt. So Moses reached out with his hand toward the sky, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. Then Pharaoh called for Moses, and said, Go, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be left behind. Even your little ones may go with you. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings, so that we may sacrifice them to the Lord our God. Therefore, our livestock too shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we shall take some of them to serve the Lord our God. And until we arrive there, we ourselves do not know with what we shall serve the Lord. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Be careful, do not see my face again, for on the day you see my face, you shall die. Moses said, You have spoken correctly. I shall never see your face again. The last plague. Now the Lord said to Moses, One more plague I will bring on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will assuredly drive you out from here completely. Speak now so that the people hear, that each man is to ask of his neighbor, and each woman of her neighbor, articles of silver and articles of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Furthermore, the man Moses himself was greatly esteemed in the land of Egypt, both in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord says, About midnight I am going out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of the Pharaoh who sits on his throne, to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the millstones, or the firstborn of the cattle as well. So there shall be a great cry in all the land of Egypt, such as there has not been before and such as shall never be again. But not even a dog will threaten any of the sons of Israel, nor anything from person to animal, so that you may learn how the Lord distinguishes between Egypt and Israel. And all these servants of yours will come down to me and bow themselves before me, saying, Go out you and all the people who follow you, and after that I will go out. And he left Pharaoh in the heat of anger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, so that my wonders will be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh. Yet the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go out of his land the Passover lamb. Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year for you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month they are, each one, to take a lamb for themselves, according to the father's households, a lamb for each household. Now if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the number of persons in them. In proportion to what each one should eat, you are to divide the lamb. Your lamb shall be an unblemished male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled at all with water, but rather roasted with fire, both its head and its legs along with its entrails. And you shall not leave any of it over until morning, but whatever is left of it until morning, you shall completely burn with fire. Now you shall eat it in this way, with your garment belted around your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in a hurry, it is the Lord's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night, and fatally strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the human firstborn to animals. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood I will pass over you, 
and no plague will come upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now this day shall be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations you are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, but on the first day you shall remove dough with yeast from your houses. For whoever eats anything with yeast from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. And on the first day you shall have a holy assembly, and another holy assembly on the seventh day. No work at all shall be done on them, except for what must be eaten by every person, that alone may be prepared by you. You shall also keep the feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your multitudes out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall keep this day throughout your generations as a permanent ordinance. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread, until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days there shall be no dough with yeast found in your houses. For whoever eats anything with yeast, that person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. You shall not eat anything with yeast. In all your dwellings you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families, and slaughter the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood which is in the basin, and apply some of the blood that is in the basin to the lintel and the two doorposts. And none of you shall go outside the door of his house until morning. A memorial of redemption. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall keep this event as an ordinance for you and your children forever. When you enter the land which the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this right. And when your children say to you, What does this right mean to you? Then you shall say, It is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord, because he passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians but spared our homes. And the people bowed low and worshipped. Then the sons of Israel went and did so. Just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Now it came about at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh got up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was no home where there was not someone dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron at night and said, Rise up, get out from among my people, both you and the sons of Israel, and go, worship the Lord, as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and go, and bless me also. Exodus of Israel. The Egyptians urged the people to send them out of the land in a hurry, for they said, We will all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, with their kneading bowls bound up in the clothes on their shoulders. Now the sons of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, for they had requested from the Egyptians articles of silver and articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have their request. Therefore they plundered the Egyptians. Now the sons of Israel journeyed from Rameses to Succoth, about six hundred thousand and men on foot, aside from children. A mixed multitude also went up with them, along with flocks and herds, a very large number of livestock and they baked the dough which they had brought out of Egypt into cakes of unleavened bread. For it had no yeast, since they were driven out of Egypt and could not delay, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. Now the time that the sons of Israel had lived in Egypt was 430 years. And at the end of 430 years, on this very day, all the multitudes of the Lord departed from the land of Egypt. Ordinance of the Passover. It is a night to be observed for the Lord, for having brought them out of the land of Egypt. This night is for the Lord, to be observed by all the sons of Israel throughout their generations. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover, no foreigner is to eat it. But as for every slave that someone has purchased with money, after you have circumcised him, then he may eat it. A stranger or a hired worker shall not eat it. It is to be eaten in a single house. You are not to bring any of the meat outside of the house, nor are you to break any bone of it. All the congregation of Israel are to celebrate this. But if a stranger resides with you and celebrates the Passover to the Lord, all of his males are to be circumcised, and then he shall come near to celebrate it. And he shall be like a native of the land. But no uncircumcised male may eat it. The same law shall apply to the native as to the stranger who resides among you. Then all the sons of Israel did so.
they did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. And on that very day the Lord brought the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt according to their multitudes. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify to me every firstborn, the firstborn of every womb among the sons of Israel, among people and animals alike. It belongs to me. And Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you departed from Egypt, from the house of slavery. For by a powerful hand the Lord brought you out from this place. And nothing with yeast shall be eaten. On this day in the month of Abib, you are about to go out from here. And it shall be when the Lord brings you to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, that you shall perform this rite in this month. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days. And nothing with yeast shall be seen among you, nor shall any dough with yeast be seen among you in all your borders. And you shall tell your son on that day, saying, It is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. And it shall serve as a sign to you on your hand, and as a reminder on your forehead, that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with the powerful hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Therefore, you shall keep this ordinance at its appointed time from year to year. Now when the Lord brings you to the land of the Canaanite, as he swore to you unto your fathers, and gives it to you, you shall devote to the Lord every firstborn of a womb, and every firstborn offspring of an animal that you own. The males belong to the Lord. But every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. And every firstborn among your sons you shall redeem. And it shall be when your son asks you in time to come, saying, What is this? Then you shall say to him, with a powerful hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. And it came about, when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go, that the Lord put to death every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from human firstborns to animal firstborns. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord the males, every firstborn of a womb, but every firstborn of my sons I redeem. So it shall serve as a sign on your hand and as phylacteries on your forehead, for with a powerful hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. God leads the people. Now when Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, even though it was near. For God said, the people might change their minds when they see war, and return to Egypt. Therefore God led the people around by way of the wilderness to the Red Sea. And the sons of Israel went up in battle formation from the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will certainly take care of you, and you shall carry my bones from here with you. Then they set out from Succoth and camped in Etham, on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light, so that they might travel by day and by night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, from the presence of the people Pharaoh in pursuit. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the sons of Israel to turn back and camp in front of Pihiaroth, between Migdol and the sea. You shall camp in front of Baal-Ziphon, opposite it, by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the sons of Israel, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase after them. And I will be honored through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord and they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his servants had a change of heart toward the people, and they said, What is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he had horses harnessed to his chariot and took his people with him. And he took six hundred select chariots, and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. So the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he chased after the sons of Israel as the sons of Israel were going out boldly. Then the Egyptians chased after them with all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and they overtook them camping by the sea, beside Pihiaroth, in front of Baal-Ziphon. As Pharaoh approached, the sons of Israel looked, and behold, the Egyptians were coming after them, and they became very frightened. So the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt? saying, Leave us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. The sea is divided. But Moses said to the people, Do not fear. 
Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will perform for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again, ever. The Lord will fight for you, while you keep silent. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. As for you, lift up your staff and reach out with your hand over the sea and divide it, and the sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. And as for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will be honored through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, when I am honored through Pharaoh, through his chariots, and through his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been going before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. And there was the cloud along with the darkness, yet it gave light at night. Therefore the one did not approach the other all night. Then Moses reached out with his hand over the sea. And the Lord swept the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the sons of Israel went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and the waters were like a wall to them on their right and on their left. Then the Egyptians took up the pursuit, and all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen went in after them into the midst of the sea. But at the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and brought the army of the Egyptians into confusion. He caused their chariot wheels to swerve, and he made them drive with difficulty. So the Egyptians each said, Let me flee from Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out with your hand over the sea so that the waters may come back over the Egyptians, over their chariots and their horsemen. So Moses reached out with his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal state at daybreak, while the Egyptians were fleeing right into it. Then the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, Pharaoh's entire army that had gone into the sea after them. Not even one of them remained. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea, and the waters were like a wall to them on their right and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses, the song of Moses and Israel. Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has thrown into the sea, and the showicest of his officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The waters cover them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, destroys the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence you overthrow those who rise up against you. You send out your burning anger, and it consumes them like chaff. At the blast of your nostrils the waters were piled up. The flowing waters stood up like a heap. The depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoils. I shall be satisfied against them. I will draw my sword, my hand will destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, working wonders? You reached out with your right hand the earth swallowed them. In your faithfulness you have led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength you have guided them to your holy habitation. The peoples have heard, they tremble. Anguish has gripped the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Adam were terrified. The leaders of Moab, trembling grips them. All the inhabitants of Canaan have despaired. Terror and dread fall upon them. By the greatness of your arm they are motionless as stone, until your people pass over, Lord until the people pass over whom you have purchased. You will bring them on plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Lord, which you have made as your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took the tambourine in her hand, 
and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord provides water. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shah. And they went three days in the wilderness and found us water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, because they were bitter. For that reason it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. There he made for them a statute and regulation, and there he tested them. And he said, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and listen to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, am your healer. Then they came to a limb where there were twelve springs of water and seventy eight palms, and they camped there beside the waters. The Lord provides manna. Then they set out from Elim, and all the congregation of the sons of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departure from the land of Egypt. But the whole congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The sons of Israel said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread until we were full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this entire assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, so that I may test them, whether or not they will walk in my instruction. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the sons of Israel, At evening you will know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your grumblings against the Lord. And what are we, that you grumble against us? The Lord provides meat. And Moses said, This will happen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and bread to the full in the morning. For the Lord hears your grumblings which you grumble against him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, Come forward before the Lord, for he has heard your grumblings. And it came about, as Aaron spoke to the entire congregation of the sons of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the grumblings of the sons of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it came about at evening that the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew evaporated, behold, on the surface of the wilderness there was a fine flake-like thing, fine as the frost on the ground. When the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? for they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded, everyone gather as much as he will eat. You shall take an omer apiece according to the number of people each of you has in his tent. The sons of Israel did so, and some gathered much and some little. When they measured it by the omer, the one who had gathered much did not have too much, and the one who had gathered little did not have too little. Everyone gathered as much as he would eat. Moses said to them, no one is to leave any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. They gathered it morning by morning, everyone as much as he would eat. But when the sun became hot, it would melt. The Sabbath. Now on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. When all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, then he said to them, This is what the Lord meant. Tomorrow is a Sabbath observance, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning, as Moses had ordered, and it did not stink nor was there a maggot in it. Then Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Yet it came about on the seventh day that some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. For that reason he gives you bread for two days on the sixth day. Remain, everyone, in his place.
no one is to leave his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel named the bread manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. A full omer of it is to be kept safe throughout your generations, so that they may see the bread that I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put a full omer of manna in it, and place it before the Lord to be kept safe throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony, to be kept. And the sons of Israel ate the manna for forty years, until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is a tenth of an afar water in the rock. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin, according to the command of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. So the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water so that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people were thirsty for water there. And they grumbled against Moses and said, Why is it that you have you brought us up from Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What am I to do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pass before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand your staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Harib, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Then he named the place Massar and Meribah, because of the quarrel of the sons of Israel, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us, or not? Miraculous battle against Amalek. Then Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us and go out, fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will station myself on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. Joshua did just as Moses told him, and fought against Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ho went up to the top of the hill. So it came about, when Moses held his hand up, that Israel prevailed. But when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. And Moses' hands were heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Ha supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. So his hands were steady until the sun set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this in a book as a memorial and recite it to Joshua, that I will utterly wipe out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and named it The Lord is My Banner. And he said, Because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war against Amalek from generation to generation. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard about everything that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took in Moses' wife Zipporah, after he had sent her away, and her two sons, one of whom was named Jashom, for Moses said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. And the other was named Eliza, for he said, The God of my father was my help, and saved me from the sword of Pharaoh. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he was camped, at the mountain of God. And he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her. Then Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and he bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other about their welfare, and went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law everything that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had confronted them on the journey, and how the Lord had rescued them. And Jethro rejoiced over all the goodness which the Lord had done for Israel, in rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. So Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of Pharaoh, and who rescued the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all the gods. Indeed, it was proven when they acted insolently against the people. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God, and Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' father-in-law before God. Jethro counsels Moses. And it came about the next day, that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses from the morning until the evening. Now when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this thing that you are doing for the people? 
Why do you alone sit as judge, and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, it comes to me, and I judge between someone and his neighbor, and make known the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law then said to him, The thing that you are doing is not good. You will surely wear out, both yourself and these people who are with you, because the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me, I will give you counsel, and God be with you. You be the people's representative before God, and you bring the disputes to God, then admonish them about the statutes and the laws, and make known to them the way in which they are to walk and the work they are to do. Furthermore, you shall select out of all the people able men who fear God, men of truth, those who hate dishonest gain. And you shall place these over them as leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. Let them judge the people at all times. And let it be that they will bring to you every major matter, but they will judge every minor matter themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will carry the burden with you. If you do this thing and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people also will go to their places in peace. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything that he had said. Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. Then they judged the people at all times. They would bring the difficult matter to Moses, but they would judge every minor matter themselves. Then Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law, and Jethro went his way to his own land Moses on Sinai. In the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. When they set out from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. And there Israel camped in front of the mountain. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, This is what you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people, and set before them all these words which the Lord had commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken we will do. And Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud, so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also trust in you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord also said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and have them wash their garments. And have them ready for the third day, for on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. But you shall set boundaries for the people all around, saying, Beware that you do not go up on the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall certainly be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall certainly be stoned or shot through. Whether animal or person, the violator shall not live. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people, and they washed their garments. He also said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not go near a woman. So it came about on the third day, when it was morning, that there were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. The Lord visits Sinai. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the entire mountain quaked violently. When the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him with thunder. Then the Lord came down on Mount Sinai, to the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down, Warn the people, so that they do not break through to the Lord to stare, and many of them perish. Also have the priests who approach the Lord consecrate themselves, or else the Lord will break out against them. And Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Set boundaries around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, Go down and come up again, you and Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them the Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words, saying, 
I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting the punishment of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing favor to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you, or your son, or your daughter, your male slave or your female slave, or your cattle, or your resident who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. For that reason the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be prolonged on the land which the Lord your God gives you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male slave, or his female slave, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And all the people were watching and hearing the thunder and the lightning flashes, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it all, they trembled and stood at a distance. Then they said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us, or we will die. However, Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. For God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him may remain with you, so that you will not sin. So the people stood at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is what you shall say to the sons of Israel, You yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. You shall not make other gods besides me. Gods of silver or gods of gold, you shall not make for yourselves. You shall make an altar of earth for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. And if you make an altar of stone for me, you shall not build it of cut stones, for if you wield your chisel on it, you will profane it. And you shall not go up by steps to my altar, so that your nakedness will not be exposed on it. Ordinances for the people. Now these are the ordinances which you are to set before them. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve for six years. But on the seventh he shall leave as a free man without a payment to you. If he comes alone, he shall leave alone. If he is the husband of a wife then his wife shall leave with him. If his master gives him a wife, and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall belong to her master, and he shall leave alone. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not leave as a free man. Then his master shall bring him to God, then he shall bring him to the door or the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him permanently. Now if a man sells his daughter as a female slave, she is not to go free as the male slaves do. If she is displeasing in the eyes of her master who designated her for himself, then he shall let her be redeemed. He does not have authority to sell her to a foreign people, because of his unfairness to her. And if he designates her for his son, he shall deal with her according to the custom of daughters. If he takes to himself another woman, he may not reduce her food, her clothing, or her conjugal rights. But if he will not do these three things for her, then she shall go free for nothing, without payment of money. Personal injuries. He who strikes someone so that he dies shall certainly be put to death. Yet if he did not lie and wait for him, but God caused him to fall into his hand, then I will appoint you a place to which he may flee. If, however, someone is enraged against his neighbor, so as to kill him in a cunning way, you are to take him even from my altar, to be put to death. And one who strikes his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. Now one who kidnaps someone, whether he sells him or he is found in his possession, shall certainly be put to death. And one who curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. Now if people have a quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or with a feast, and he does not die but is confined to bed, if he gets up and walks around outside on his staff, then he who struck him shall go unpunished. He shall only pay for his loss of time, and shall pay for his care until he is completely healed. And if someone strikes his male or female slave with a rod and the slave dies at his hand, he shall be punished. If However, the slave survives a day or two, 
no vengeance shall be taken, for the slave is his property. Now if people struggle with each other and strike a pregnant woman so that she gives birth prematurely, but there is no injury, the guilty person shall certainly be fined as the woman's husband may demand of him, and he shall pay as the judges decide. But if there is any further injury, then you shall appoint as a penalty life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. And if someone strikes the eye of his male or female slave and destroys it, he shall let the slave go free on account of the eye. And if he knocks out the tooth of his male or female slave, he shall let the slave go free on account of the tooth. Now if an ox gores a man or a woman to death, the ox shall certainly be stoned and its flesh shall not be eaten. But the owner of the ox shall go unpunished. If, however, an ox was previously in the habit of goring and its owner has been warned, yet he does not confine it and it kills a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned and its owner also shall be put to death. If a ransom is demanded of him, then he shall give for the redemption of his life whatever is demanded of him. Whether it gores a son or a daughter, it shall be done to him according to the same rule. If the ox gores a male or female slave, the owner shall give his or her master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. Property rights. Now if someone opens a pit, or digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit shall make restitution. He shall give money to its owner and the dead animal shall become his. And if someone's ox injures another's ox so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide its proceeds equally. And they shall also divide the dead ox. Or if it is known that the ox was previously in the habit of goring, yet its owner has not confined it, he must make restitution of ox for ox, and the dead animal shall become his property rights. If someone steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he shall pay five oxen for the ox and four sheep for the sheep, if the thief is caught while breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there will be no guilt for bloodshed on his account. If the sun has risen on him, there will be guilt for bloodshed on his account, a thief shall certainly make restitution. If he owns nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If what he stole is actually found alive in his possession, whether an ox or a donkey or a sheep, he shall pay double. If someone lets a field or vineyard be grazed bare and lets his animal loose so that it grazes in another person's field, he shall make restitution from the best of his own field and the best of his own vineyard. If a fire breaks out and spreads to thorn bushes, and stacked grain or the standing grain or the field itself is consumed, the one who started the fire must make restitution. If someone gives his neighbor money or goods to keep for him and it is stolen from the neighbor's house, if the thief is caught, then the thief shall pay double. If the thief is not caught, then the owner of the house shall appear before the judges to determine whether he laid his hands on his neighbor's property. For every breach of trust, whether it is for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for clothing, or for any lost thing about which one says, this is it, the case of both parties shall come before the judges. He whom the judges condemn shall pay double to his neighbor. If someone gives his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any animal to keep for him, and it dies or is injured or is driven away while no one is looking, an oath before the Lord shall be taken by the two of them that he has not laid a hand on his neighbor's property, and its owner shall accept it, and he shall not be compelled to make restitution. But if it is actually stolen from him, he shall make restitution to its owner. If it is all torn to pieces, have him bring it as evidence. He shall not be compelled to make restitution for what has been torn to pieces. And if someone borrows an animal from his neighbor, and it is injured or dies while its owner is not with it, he shall make full restitution. If its owner is with it, the borrower shall not be compelled to make restitution. If it is hired, it came by its hire. Various laws. If a man seduces a virgin who is not betrothed and sleeps with her, he must pay a dowry for her to be his wife. If her father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money equal to the dowry for virgins. You shall not allow a sorceress to live. Whoever his sexual intercourse with an animal must be put to death. He who sacrifices to any god, other than to the Lord alone shall be utterly destroyed. You shall not oppress a stranger nor torment him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not oppress any widow or orphan. If you oppress him at all, and if he does cry out to me, I will assuredly hear his cry. And my anger will be kindled, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall become widows, and your children fatherless. If you lend money to my people, to the poor among you, you are not to act as a creditor to him. You shall not charge him interest. If you ever seize your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you are to return it to him before the sun sets, for that is his only covering. It is his cloak for his body.
what else is he to sleep in? And it will come about that when he cries out to me, I will listen to him, for I am gracious. You shall not curse God, nor curse a ruler of your people. You shall not hold back the offering from your entire harvest and your wine. The firstborn of your sons you shall give to me. You shall do the same with your oxen and with your sheep. It shall be with its mother for seven days. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. You shall be holy people to me, therefore you shall not eat any flesh torn to pieces in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. Various laws. You shall not give a false report. Do not join your hand with a wicked person to be a malicious witness. You shall not follow the crowd in doing evil, nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to join together with a crowd in order to pervert justice. Nor shall you show favor to a poor person in his dispute. If you encounter your enemy's ox or his donkey wandering away, you must return it to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying helpless under its load, you shall not leave it helpless for its owner. You must arrange the load with him. You shall not pervert the justice due to your needy brother in his dispute. Keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent or the righteous, for I will not acquit the guilty. You shall not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of the just. You shall not depress a stranger, since you yourselves know the feelings of a stranger, for you also were strangers in the land of Egypt. The Sabbath and the land. Now you shall sow your land for six years and gather in its yield. But in the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie uncultivated, so that the needy of your people may eat and whatever they leave the animal of the field may eat. You are to do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. For six days you are to do your work, but on the seventh day you shall cease from labor so that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female slave, as well as the stranger residing with you, may refresh themselves. Now concerning everything which I have said to you, be careful, and do not mention the name of other gods, nor let them be heard from your mouth. Three National Feasts Three times a year you shall celebrate a feast to me. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. For seven days you are to eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you, at the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in that month you came out of Egypt. And no one is to appear before me empty-handed. Also you shall keep the feast of the harvest of the first fruits of your labors from what you sow in the field. Also the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in the fruit of your labors from the field. Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor is the fat of my feast to remain overnight until morning. You shall bring the choice first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. You are not to boil a young goat in the milk of its mother. Conquest of the land. Behold, I am going to send an angel before you to guard you along the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Be attentive to him and obey his voice. Do not be rebellious toward him, for he will not pardon your rebellion, since my name is in him. But if you truly obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will completely destroy them. You shall not worship their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their deeds, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break their memorial stones in pieces. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will remove sickness from your midst. There will be no one miscarrying or unable to have children in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror ahead of you, and throw into confusion all the people among whom you come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets ahead of you so that they will drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites and the Hittites from you. I will not drive them out from you in a single year, so that the land will not become desolate and the animals of the field become too numerous for you. I will drive them out from you little by little, until you become fruitful and take possession of the land. I will set your boundary from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness to the Euphrates River. For I will hand over the inhabitants of the land to you, and you will drive them out from you. You shall make no covenant with them or with their gods. They shall not live in your land, otherwise they will make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it is certain to be a snare to you. People affirm their covenant with God. Then he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and you shall worship at a distance. Moses alone, however, shall approach the Lord, but they shall not approach, nor shall the people come up with him. Then Moses came and reported to the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, 
all the words which the Lord had spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. Then he got up early in the morning, and built an altar at the foot of the mountain with twelve memorial stones for the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the sons of Israel, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed bulls as peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and the other half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it as the people listened. And they said, All that the Lord had spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. So Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, and said, Behold the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses went up with Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire, as clear as the sky itself. Yet he did not reach out with his hand against the nobles of the sons of Israel. And they saw God, and they ate and drank. Now the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay there, and I will give you the stone tablets with the Lord and the commandments which I have written for their instruction. So Moses got up along with Joshua his servant, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. But to the elders he said, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever is a legal matter, have him approach them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses from the midst of the cloud. And to the eyes of the sons of Israel, the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the mountain top. Then Moses entered the midst of the cloud as he went up to the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain for forty days and forty nights, offerings for the sanctuary. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the sons of Israel to take a contribution for me. From everyone whose heart moves him you shall take my contribution. This is the contribution which you are to take from them, gold, silver, and bronze, violet, purple, and scarlet material, fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, fine leather, acacia wood, oil for lighting balsam oil for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastpiece. Have them construct a sanctuary for me, so that I may dwell among them. According to all that I am going to show you as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture, so you shall construct it. Ark of the Covenant. Now they shall construct an ark of acacia wood two and a half cubits long, one and a half cubits wide, and one and a half cubits high. You shall overlay it with pure gold. Inside and out you shall overlay it, and you shall make a gold molding around it. You shall also cast four gold rings for it and fasten them on its four feet. Two rings shall be on one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it. And you shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark, to carry the ark with them. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark. They shall not be removed from it. You shall put into the ark the testimony which I shall give you. And you shall make an atoning cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide. You shall make two cherubim of gold. Make them of hammered work at the two ends of the atoning cover. Make one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim of one piece with the atoning cover at its two ends. And the cherubim shall have their wings spread upward, covering the atoning cover with their wings and facing one another. The faces of the cherubim are to be turned toward the atoning cover. Then you shall put the atoning cover on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony which I will give to you. There I will meet with you. And from above the atoning cover, from between the two cherubim which are upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak to you about every commandment that I will give you for the sons of Israel. Bread of the presence. You shall also make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long and one cubit wide, and one and a half cubits high. You shall overlay it with pure gold and make a gold border around it. And you shall make for it a rim of a hand width around it. And you shall make a gold border for the rim around it. You shall also make four gold rings for it and put rings on the four corners which are on its four legs. The rings shall be close to the rim, as holders for the poles to carry the table. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, so that with them the table may be carried. You shall also make its dishes, its pans, its jars, and its libation bowls with which to pour drink offerings. You shall make them of pure gold. And you shall set the bread of the presence on the table before me continually. The golden lampstand. Then you shall make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand, its base and its shaft, are to be made of hammer work. Its cups, its bulbs, 
and its flowers shall be of one piece with it. Six branches shall go out from its sides. Three branches of the lamp stand from its one side, and three branches of the lamp stand from its other side. Three cups shall be shaped like almond blossoms on the one branch, a bulb and a flower, and three cups shaped like almond blossoms on the other branch, a bulb and a flower, the same for six branches going out from the lamp stand. And on the lamp stand four cups shaped like almond blossoms, its bulbs and its flowers. A bulb shall be under the first pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb under the second pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb under the third pair of branches coming out of it, for the six branches coming out of the lamp stand. Their bulbs and their branches shall be of one piece with it. All of it shall be one piece of hammered work of pure gold. Then you shall make its lamps seven in number, and they shall mount its lamps so as to shed light on the space in front of it. Its tongs and its trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made from a talent of pure gold, with all these utensils. See that you make them by the pattern for them, which was shown to you on the mountain curtains of linen. Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twisted linen and violet, purple, and scarlet material. You shall make them with cherubim, the work of a skilled embroiderer. The length of each curtain shall be twenty-eight cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains shall have the same measurements. Five curtains shall be joined to one another, and the other five curtains shall be joined to one another. You shall make loops of violet on the edge of the outermost curtain in the first set, and likewise you shall make them on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the second set. You shall make fifty loops in the one curtain, and you shall make fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is in the second set. The loops shall be opposite each other. You shall also make fifty clasps of gold, and join the curtains to one another with the clasps so that the tabernacle will be a unit. Curtains of goat's hair. Then you shall make curtains of goat's hair as a tent over the tabernacle. You shall make eleven curtains in all. The length of each curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains shall have the same measurements. You shall join five curtains by themselves in the other six curtains by themselves, and you shall double over the sixth curtain at the front of the tent. You shall make fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the first set, and fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the second set. You shall also make fifty clasps of bronze, and you shall put the clasps into the loops and join the tent together so that it will be a unit. The overhanging part that is left over in the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that is left over, shall hang over the back of the tabernacle. The cubit on one side and the cubit on the other, of what is left over in the length of the curtains of the tent shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on one side and on the other, to cover it. And you shall make a covering for the tent of ram's skins dyed red and a covering of fine leather above. Boards and bases. Then you shall make the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood, standing upright. Ten cubits shall be the length of each board and one and a half cubits the width of each board. There shall be two tenons for each board, fitted to one another. That is what you shall do for all the boards of the tabernacle. You shall make the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side. You shall make forty bases of silver under the twenty boards, two bases under one board for its two tenons, and two bases under another board for its two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, twenty boards, and there forty bases of silver, two bases under one board and two bases under another board. For the back of the tabernacle, to the west, you shall make six boards. You shall make two boards for the corners of the tabernacle at the back. They shall be double beneath, and together they shall be complete to its top to the first ring. This is how it shall be with both of them, they shall form the two corners. And there shall be eight boards with their bases of silver, sixteen bases. Two bases under one board and two bases under another board. Then you shall make bars of acacia wood, five for the boards of one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the back side to the west. The middle bar in the center of the boards shall pass through from end to end. And you shall overlay the boards with gold, and make the rings of gold as holders for the bars. And you shall overlay the bars with gold. Then you shall erect the tabernacle according to its plan which you have been shown on the mountain. The veil and curtain. You shall also make a veil of violet, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. It shall be made with cherubim, the work of a skilled embroiderer. Then you shall hang it on four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold, their hooks also of gold, on four bases of silver. You shall hang up the veil under the clasps, and bring in the ark of the testimony there within the veil. 
and the veil shall serve as a petition for you between the holy place and the most holy place. You shall put the atoning cover on the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. And you shall set the table outside the veil, and the lamp stand opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. And you shall put the table on the north side. You shall also make a curtain for the doorway of the tent of violet, purple, and scarlet material and fine twisted linen, the work of a weaver. And you shall make five pillars of acacia for the curtain and overlay them with gold, their hooks also of gold. And you shall cast five bases of bronze for them, the bronze altar. Now you shall make the altar of acacia wood, five cubits long and five cubits wide. The altar shall be square, and its height shall be three cubits. You shall make its horns on its four corners. Its horns shall be of one piece with it, and you shall overlay it with bronze. And you shall make its pails for removing its ashes, and its shovels, its basins, its forks, and its fiery pans. You shall make all its utensils of bronze. You shall also make for it a grating, a netting of bronze, and on the netting you shall make four bronze rings at its four corners. And you shall put it under the ledge of the altar, so that the netting will reach halfway up the altar. You shall also make carrying poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with bronze. Its poles shall be inserted into the rings, so that the poles will be on the two sides of the altar when it is carried. You shall make it hollow with planks, as it was shown to you on the mountain, so they shall make it. Courtyard of the Tabernacle. Now you shall make the courtyard of the tabernacle. On the south side there shall be hangings for the courtyard of fine twisted linen, a hundred cubits long for one side and its pillars shall be twenty, with their twenty bases of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their bands shall be of silver. Likewise for the north side in length there shall be hangings a hundred cubits long, and its twenty pillars with their twenty bases of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their bands shall be of silver. For the width of the courtyard on the west side shall be hangings of fifty cubits, with their ten pillars and their ten bases. The width of the courtyard on the east side shall be fifty cubits. The hangings for the one side of the gate shall be fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three bases. And for the other side there shall be hangings of fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three bases. And for the gate of the courtyard there shall be a curtain of twenty cubits, a violet, purple, and scarlet material and fine twisted linen, the work of a weaver, with their four pillars and their four bases. All the pillars around the courtyard shall be joined together with silver, with their hooks of silver and their bases of bronze. The length of the courtyard shall be a hundred cubits, and the width fifty throughout, and the height five cubits of fine twisted linen, and their bases of bronze. All the utensils of the tabernacle used in all its service, and all its pegs, and all the pegs of the courtyard, shall be of bronze. And you shall command the sons of Israel that they bring you clear oil of beaten olives for the light, to make a lamp burn continually. In the tent of meeting, outside the veil which is before the testimony. Aaron and his sons shall keep it in order from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a permanent statute throughout their generations for the sons of Israel, garments of the priests. Then bring forward to yourself your brother Aaron, and his sons with him, from among the sons of Israel, to serve as priests to me, Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eliza and Edomar, Aaron's sons. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all the skillful people whom I have endowed with the spirit of wisdom that they make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may serve as priest to me. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breast piece, an ephod, a robe, a tunic of check work, a turban, and a sash. They shall make holy garments for your brother Aaron and his sons, so that he may serve as priest to me. They shall take the gold, the violet, the purple, the scarlet material, and the fine linen. They shall also make the ephod of gold, a violet, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen, the work of the skilled embroiderer. It shall have two shoulder pieces joined to its two ends, so that it may be joined. The skillfully woven band of its overlay, which is on it, shall be like its workmanship, of the same material, of gold, of violet and purple and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. And you shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on the one stone and the names of the remaining six on the other stone, according to their birth. As a jeweler engraves a signet, you shall engrave the two stones according to the names of the sons of Israel. You shall set them in filigree settings of gold. And you shall put the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod, as stones of memorial for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall carry their names before the Lord on his two shoulders as a memorial. And you shall make filigree settings of gold, and two chains of pure gold. You shall make them of twisted cord work, 
and you shall put the corded chains on the filigree settings. You shall make a breast piece of judgment, the work of a skilled embroiderer. Like the work of the ephod you shall make it, of gold, a violet, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen you shall make it. It shall be square and folded double, a span in length and a span in width. And you shall mount on it four rows of stones. The first row shall be a row of ruby, topaz, an emerald. And the second row a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row a beryl, and an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold filigree. The stones shall be engraved according to the names of the sons of Israel, twelve, according to their names. They shall be like the engravings of a signet, each according to his name for the twelve tribes. You shall also make on the breastpiece twisted chains of cord work in pure gold. And you shall make on the breastpiece two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastpiece. And you shall put the two cords of gold on the two rings at the ends of the breastpiece. You shall put the other two ends of the two cords on the two filigree settings, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod, at the front of it. And you shall make two rings of gold and place them on the two ends of the breastpiece, on the edge of it, which is toward the inner side of the ephod. And you shall make two rings of gold and put them on the bottom of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod, on the front of it close to the place where it is joined, above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And they shall bind the breastpiece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a violet cord, so that it will be on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, and that the breastpiece will not come loose from the ephod. So Aaron shall carry the names of the sons of Israel in the breastpiece of judgment over his heart when he enters the holy place, as a memorial before the Lord continually. And you shall put in the breastpiece of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. And Aaron shall carry the judgment of the sons of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of violet. There shall be an opening at its top in the middle of it. Around its opening there shall be a binding of woven work, like the opening of a coat of mail, so that it will not be torn. You shall make on its hem pomegranates of violet, purple, and scarlet material all around on its hem and bells of gold between them all around, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, all around on the hem of the robe. It shall be on Aaron when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he enters and leaves the holy place before the Lord, so that he will not die. You shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engravings of a signet, holy to the Lord. You shall fasten it on a violet cord, and it shall be on the turban. It shall be at the front of the turban. It shall be on Aaron's forehead and Aaron shall take away the guilt of the holy things which the sons of Israel consecrate, regarding all their holy gifts. And it shall always be on his forehead, so that they may be accepted before the Lord. And you shall weave the tunic of checkered work of fine linen, and shall make a turban of fine linen, and you shall make a sash, the work of a weaver. For Aaron's sons you shall also make tunics. You shall also make sashes for them, and you shall make caps for them, for glory and for beauty. Then you shall put them on Aaron your brother and on his sons with him. And you shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them, so that they may serve me as priests. You shall make for them linen undergarments to cover their bare flesh. They shall reach from the waist even to the thighs. And they shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they enter the tent of meeting, or when they approach the altar to minister in the holy place, so that they do not incur guilt and die. It shall be a statute forever to him and to his descendants after him. Consecration of the priests. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them to serve as priests to me, take one bull and two rams without blemish. An unleavened bread and unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers spread with oil. You shall make them of fine wheat flour. And you shall put them in one basket, and present them in the basket along with the bull and the two rams. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the doorway of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. And you shall take the garments, and put on Aaron the tunic and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastpiece, and wrap his waist with the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And you shall set the turban on his head and put the holy crown on the turban. Then you shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head, and anoint him. You shall also bring his sons and put tunics on them. And you shall wrap their waists with sashes, Aaron and his sons, and fit caps on them, and they shall have the priesthood by a permanent statute. So you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. The Sacrifices then you shall bring the bull in front of the tent of meeting, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull. And you shall slaughter the bull before the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting. 
Then you shall take some of the blood of the bull and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger. And you shall pour out all the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. And you shall take all the fat that covers the entrails, and the lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, and offer them up in smoke on the altar. But the flesh of the bull and its hide and its refuse, you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. You shall also take the one ram, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram. And you shall slaughter the ram, and take its blood and sprinkle it around on the altar. Then you shall cut the ram into its pieces, and wash its entrails and its legs, and put them with its pieces in its head. And you shall offer up in smoke the whole ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord, it is a soothing aroma, an offering by fire to the Lord. Then you shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram. And you shall slaughter the ram, and take some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear and on the lobes of his sons' right ears, and on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet, and sprinkle the rest of the blood around on the altar. Then you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil, and sprinkle it on Aaron and on his garments, and on his sons and on his sons' garments with him. So he and his garments shall be consecrated, as well as his sons and his sons' garments with him. You shall also take the fat from the ram and the fat tail, and the fat that covers the entrails in the lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, and the right thigh for it is a ram of ordination, and one loaf of bread, and one cake of bread mixed with oil, and one wafer from the basket of unleavened bread which is set before the Lord. And you shall put all these in the hands of Aaron and in the hands of his sons, and shall wave them as a wave offering before the Lord. Then you shall take them from their hands and offer them up in smoke on the altar on the burnt offering for a soothing aroma before the Lord. It is an offering by fire to the Lord. Then you shall take the breast of Aaron's ram of ordination, and wave it as a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be your portion. You shall consecrate the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution which was waved and which was offered from the ram of ordination, from the one which was for Aaron and from the one which was for his sons. It shall be for Aaron and his sons as their portion forever from the sons of Israel, for it is a contribution. And it shall be a contribution from the sons of Israel from the sacrifices of their peace offerings, their contribution to the Lord. The holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after him, so that they may be anointed and ordained in them. For seven days the one of his sons who is priest in his place shall put them on when he enters the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place. Food of the priests. Now you shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in a holy place. Then Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket, at the doorway of the tent of meeting. So they shall eat those things by which atonement was made at their ordination and consecration. But a layman shall not eat them, because they are holy. And if any of the flesh of ordination or any of the bread remains until morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten, because it is holy. So you shall do for Aaron and for his sons, according to all that I have commanded you. You shall ordain them for seven days. Each day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement, and you shall purify the altar when you make atonement for it, and you shall anoint it to consecrate it. For seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it. Then the altar shall be most holy, and whatever touches the altar shall be holy. Now this is what you shall offer on the altar, two one-year-old lambs each day, continuously. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. And there shall be a tenth of an afar of fine flour mixed with a fourth of a hin of beaten oil, and a fourth of a hin of wine for a drink offering with one lamb. The other lamb you shall offer at twilight, and shall offer with it the same grain offering and the same drink offering as in the morning, for a soothing aroma, an offering by fire to the Lord. It shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the doorway of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you, to speak to you there. I will meet there with the sons of Israel and it shall be consecrated by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. I will also consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve as priests to me. And I will dwell among the sons of Israel and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, so that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God, the altar of incense. Now you shall make an altar as a place for burning incense. You shall make it of acacia wood. Its length shall be a cubit, and its width a cubit. It shall be square, and its height shall be two cubits. Its horns shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, its top and its sides all around, and its horns. And you shall make a gold molding all around for it. You shall also make two gold rings for it under its molding. 
you shall make them on its two sides, on opposite sides, and they shall be holders for poles with which to carry it. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put this altar in front of the veil that is near the Ark of the Testimony, in front of the atoning cover that is over the Ark of the Testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it. He shall burn it every morning when he trims the lamps. And when Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight, he shall burn incense. There shall be perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer any strange incense on this altar, or burnt offering, or meal offering. And you shall not pour out a drink offering on it. However, Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year. He shall make atonement on it with the blood of the sin offering of atonement once a year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord also spoke to Moses, saying, When you take a census of the sons of Israel to count them, then each one of them shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord, when you count them, so that there will be no plague among them when you count them. This is what everyone who is counted shall give, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary the shekel is twenty geiras, half a shekel is a contribution to the Lord. Everyone who is counted, from twenty years old and over, shall give the contribution to the Lord. The rich shall not pay more, and the poor shall not pay less, than the half shekel, when you give the contribution to the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. And you shall take the atonement money from the sons of Israel and give it for the service of the tent of meeting, so that it may be a memorial for the sons of Israel before the Lord, to make atonement for yourselves. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also make a basin of bronze, with its base of bronze, for washing. And you shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet from it. When they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water, so that they do not die. Or when they approach the altar to minister, by offering up in smoke a fire sacrifice to the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet, so that they do not die. And it shall be a permanent statute for them, for Aaron and his descendants throughout their generations. The Anointing Oil. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take also for yourself the finest of spices, of liquid myrrh five hundred shekels, and of fragrant cinnamon half as much. 250, and of fragrant cane 250, and of kazia 500, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive oil ahin. You shall make from these a holy anointing oil, a fragrant mixture of ointments, the work of a perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. And you shall anoint the tent of meeting with it, and the ark of the testimony, and the table and all its utensils, and the lampstand and its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and the basin and its stand. You shall also consecrate them, so that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them shall be holy. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, so that they may serve as priests to me. Furthermore, you shall speak to the sons of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on anyone's body, nor shall you make any like it in the same proportions. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever mixes any like it or whoever puts any of it on a layman shall be cut off from his people. The incense. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take for yourself spices, stacked, on Aicha, and Galbanum, spices and pure frankincense. There shall be an equal part of each. You shall make incense from it all, a skillful mixture, the work of a perfumer, salted, pure, and holy. And you shall crush some of it very fine, and put part of it in front of the testimony in the tent of meeting where I will meet with you it shall be most holy to you. And the incense which you shall make, you shall not make in the same proportions for yourselves. It shall be holy to you for the Lord. Whoever makes any like it, to use as perfume, shall be cut off from his people, the skilled craftsmen. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ha, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all kinds of craftsmanship, to create artistic designs for work in gold, in silver, and in bronze, and in the cutting of stones for settings, and in the carving of wood, so that he may work in all kinds of craftsmanship. And behold, I myself have appointed with him Oliab, the son of Isamach, of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all who are skillful I have put skill, so that they may make everything that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, the ark of testimony, the atoning cover that is on it and all the furniture of the tent, the table and its utensils, the pure gold lampstand with all its utensils, 
and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand, the woven garments as well, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons, with which to carry out their priesthood, the anointing oil also, and the fragrant incense for the holy place, they are to make them according to everything that I have commanded you. The sign of the Sabbath. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Now as for you, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You must keep my Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, so that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Therefore you are to keep the Sabbath, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it must be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day must be put to death. So the sons of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as a permanent covenant. It is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he ceased from labor, and was refreshed. When he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written by the finger of God, the golden calf. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people assembled around Aaron and said to him, Come, make us a God who will go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to him. Aaron said to them, Take up the gold rings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people tore off the gold rings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. Then he took the gold from their hands, and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made it into a cast metal calf. And they said, This is your God, Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now when Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. So the next day they got up early and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink, and got up to engage in lewd behavior. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down at once, for your people, whom you brought up from the land of Egypt, have behaved corruptly. They have quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a cast metal calf, and have worshipped it and have sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are an obstinate people. So now leave me alone, that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them, and I will make of you a great nation. Moses plea. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why does your anger burn against your people whom you have brought out from the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians talk, saying, with evil motives he brought them out, to kill them on the mountains, and to destroy them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent of doing harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by yourself, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens, and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented of the harm which he said he would do to his people. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets which were written on both sides. They were written on one side and the other. The tablets were God's work, and the writing was God's writing engraved on the tablets. Now when Joshua heard the sound of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a sound of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the sound of the cry of victory, nor is it the sound of the cry of defeat. But I hear the sound of singing. Moses' anger. And it came about, as soon as Moses approached the camp, that he saw the calf and the people dancing. And Moses' anger burned, and he threw the tablets from his hands, and shattered them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made and completely burned it with fire, and ground it to powder, and scattered it over the surface of the water, and made the sons of Israel drink it. Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you, that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself, that they are prone to evil. For they said to me, Make a God for us who will go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to him. So I said to them, Whoever has any gold, let them tear it off. Then they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Now when Moses saw that the people were out of control, 
for Aaron had let them get out of control to the point of being an object of ridicule among their enemies. Moses then stood at the gate of the camp, and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered together to him. And he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Every man of you put his sword on his thigh, and go back and forth from gate to gate in the camp, and kill every man his brother, and every man his friend, and every man his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did as Moses instructed, and about three thousand men of the people fell that day. Then Moses said, Dedicate yourselves today to the Lord, for every man has been against his son and against his brother, in order that he may bestow a blessing upon you today. And on the next day Moses said to the people, You yourselves have committed a great sin. And now I am going up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, this people has committed a great sin, and they have made a God of God for themselves. But now, if you will forgive their sin, very well. But if not, please wipe me out from your book which you have written. However, the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will wipe him out of my book. But go now, lead the people where I told you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless on the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. Then the Lord struck the people with the plague, because of what they did with the calf which Aaron had made. The journey resumed. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. And I will send an angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in your midst, because you are an obstinate people, and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard this sad word, they went into mourning, and none of them put on his jewelry. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, You are an obstinate people. If I were to go up in your midst for just one moment, I would destroy you. So now, take off your jewelry that I may know what I shall do to you. So the sons of Israel stripped themselves of their jewelry, from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, a good distance from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting which was outside the camp. And it came about, whenever Moses went out to the tent, that all the people would arise and stand, each at the entrance of his tent, and gaze after Moses until he entered the tent. Whenever Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would stand and worship, each at the entrance of his tent. So the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses returned to the camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Moses intercedes. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people. But you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now then, if I have found favor in your sight in any way, please let me know your ways so that I may know you, in order that I may find favor in your sight. Consider too, that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not by your going with us, so that we, I and your people, may be distinguished from all the other people who are on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, Please, show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show compassion to whom I will show compassion. He further said, You cannot see my face for mankind shall not see me and live. Then the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on the rock. And it will come about, while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The two tablets replaced. Now the Lord said to Moses, Cut out for yourself two stone tablets like the former ones and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you smashed. So be ready by morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, 
and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. And no one is to come up with you, nor let anyone be seen anywhere on the mountain. Even the flocks and the herds are not to graze in front of that mountain. So he cut out two stone tablets like the former ones, and Moses got up early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and he took the two stone tablets in his hand. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him as he called upon the name of the Lord. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in faithfulness and truth. Who keeps faithfulness for thousands, who forgives wrongdoing, violation of his law, and sin? Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, inflicting the punishment of fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. And Moses hurried to Bolo toward the ground and worship. Then he said, If in any way I have found favor in your sight, Lord, please may the Lord go along in our midst, even though the people are so obstinate, and pardon our wrongdoing and our sin, and take us as your own possession. The covenant renewed. Then God said, Behold, I am going to make a covenant. Before all your people I will perform miracles which have not been produced in all the earth nor among any of the nations. And all the people among whom you live will see the working of the Lord, for it is a fearful thing that I am going to perform with you. Be sure to comply with what I am commanding you this day, behold, I am going to drive out the Amorite from you, and the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Brazite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Be careful that you do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land into which you are going, or it will become a snare in your midst. But rather, you are to tear down their altars and smash their memorial stones, and cut down their ashram. For you shall not worship any other god, because the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Otherwise you might make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they would prostitute themselves with their gods and sacrifice to their gods. And someone might invite you to it of his sacrifice. And you might take some of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters might prostitute themselves with their gods and cause your sons also to prostitute themselves with their gods. You shall not make for yourself any gods cast in metal. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. For seven days you are to eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you, at the appointed time in the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib you came out of Egypt. The firstborn from every womb belongs to me, and all your male livestock, the firstborn from cattle and sheep. You shall redeem with a lamb the firstborn from a donkey. And if you do not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. You shall redeem all the firstborn of your sons. None are to appear before me empty-handed. You shall work six days, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during plowing time and harvest you shall rest. And you shall celebrate the feast of weeks, that is, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year all your males are to appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will drive out nations from you and enlarge your borders, and no one will covet your land when you go up three times a year to appear before the Lord your God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor is the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover to be left over until morning. You shall bring the very first of the first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights. He did not eat bread or drink water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Moses' face shines. And it came about, when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand as he was coming down from the mountain. That Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because of his speaking with him. So when Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to approach him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers in the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke to them. Afterward all the sons of Israel came near, and he commanded them to do everything that the Lord had spoken to him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. And whenever he came out and spoke to the sons of Israel what he had been commanded, the sons of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. So Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with him. The Sabbath emphasized. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of the sons of Israel, and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a holy day, 
a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. Moses spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart is to bring it as the Lord's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze, and violet, purple, and scarlet material, fine linen, goat's hair, and ram's skins dyed red, and fine leather, and acacia wood, and oil for lighting, and spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastpiece. Tabernacle artisans. Have every skillful person among you come and make all that the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle, its tent and its covering, its hooks and its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its bases. The ark and its poles, the atoning cover, and the covering curtain. The table and its poles, and all its utensils, and the bread of the presence. The lamps tend also for the light and its utensils and its lamps, and the oil for the light. And the altar of incense and its poles, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, and the curtain for the doorway at the entrance of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating, its poles, and all its utensils, the basin and its stand. The hangings of the courtyard, its pillars and its bases, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard. The pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs of the courtyard in their ropes. The woven garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons, to serve as priests. Gifts received. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel departed from Moses' presence. And everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved him came and brought the Lord's contribution for the work of the tent of meeting and for all its service, and for the holy garments. Then all whose hearts moved them, both men and women, came and brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and bracelets, all articles of gold. So did everyone who presented an offering of gold to the Lord. Everyone who was in possession of violet, purple, or scarlet material or fine linen or goat's hair, or ram's skins dyed red or fine leather, brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver and bronze brought the Lord's contribution. And everyone who was in possession of acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the skilled women spun with their hands, and brought what they had spun, in violet, purple, and scarlet material, and in fine linen. And all the women whose heart stirred with a skill spun the goat's hair. The rulers, moreover, brought the onyx stones and the stones for setting for the ephod and for the breast base and the spice and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. The Israelites, all the men and women, whose heart moved them to bring material for all the work, which the Lord had commanded through Moses to be done, brought a voluntary offering to the Lord. Then Moses said to the sons of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Ha, of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all craftsmanship to create designs for working in gold, in silver, and in bronze, and in the cutting of stones for settings, and in the carving of wood, so as to perform in every inventive work. He also has put in his heart to teach, both he and Oeliab, the son of Isamach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to perform every work of an engraver, of a designer, and of an embroiderer, in violet, purple, and in scarlet material, and in fine linen, and of a weaver, as performers of every work and makers of designs, the tabernacle underwritten. Now Bozalel, O Oliab, and every skillful person in whom the Lord has put skill and understanding to know how to perform all the work in the construction of the sanctuary, shall perform in accordance with everything that the Lord has commanded. Then Moses called Bozalel, O Oliab, and every skillful person in whom the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him, to come to the work to perform it. They received from Moses every contribution which the sons of Israel had brought to perform the work in the construction of the sanctuary. And they still continued bringing to him voluntary offerings every morning. And all the skillful people who were performing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work which they were performing. And they said to Moses, The people are bringing much more than enough for the construction work which the Lord commanded us to perform. So Moses issued a command, and circulated a proclamation throughout the camp, saying, no man or woman is to perform work any longer for the contributions of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing any more. For the material they had was sufficient and more than enough for all the work to perform it. Construction begins.
All the skillful people among those who were performing the work made the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twisted linen and violet, purple, and scarlet material, with cherubim, the work of a skilled embroiderer, Bazalel made them. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains had the same measurements. He joined five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he joined to one another. And he made loops of violet on the edge of the outermost curtain in the first set. He did likewise on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second set. He made fifty loops in the one curtain, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set. The loops were opposite each other. He also made fifty clasps of gold, and joined the curtains to one another with the clasps, so that the tabernacle was a unit. Then he made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. He made eleven curtains in all. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits was the width of each curtain. The eleven curtains had the same measurements. He joined five curtains by themselves, and the other six curtains by themselves. Moreover, he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the first set, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second set. He also made fifty clasps of bronze to join the tent together so that it would be a unit. And he made a covering for the tent of ram's skins dyed red, and a covering of fine leather above. Then he made the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood, standing upright. Ten cubits was the length of each board, and one and a half cubits the width of each board. There were two tenons for each board, fitted to one another. He did this to all the boards of the tabernacle. So he made the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side. And he made forty bases of silver under the twenty boards. Two bases under one board for its two tenons, and two bases under another board for its two tenons. Then for the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, he made twenty boards and their forty bases of silver. Two bases under one board, and two bases under another board. And for the back of the tabernacle, to the west, he made a six boards. He made two boards for the corners of the tabernacle at the back. They were double beneath, and together they were complete to its top, to the first ring. He did it with both of them for the two corners. There were eight boards with their bases of silver, sixteen bases, two bases under every board. Then he made bars of acacia wood five for the boards of one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the back side to the west. And he made the middle bar to pass through in the center of the boards from end to end. Then he overlaid the boards with gold, and made their rings of gold as holders for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. Moreover, he made a veil of violet, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. He made it with cherubim the work of a skilled embroiderer. And he made four pillars of acacia for it, and overlaid them with gold, with their hooks of gold. And he cast four bases of silver for them. He also made a curtain for the doorway of the tent, a violet, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen, the work of a weaver. And he made its five pillars with their hooks, and he overlaid their tops and their bands with gold. But their five bases were of bronze. Construction continues. Now Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood. Its length was two and a half cubits, its width one and a half cubits, and its height one and a half cubits. And he overlaid it with pure gold inside and out, and made a gold molding for it all around. He cast four rings of gold for it on its four feet, two rings on one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it. And he made poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold. He put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark, to carry it. He also made an atoning cover of pure gold two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide. And he made two cherubim of gold. He made them of hammered work at the two ends of the atoning cover. One cherub at the one end and one cherub at the other end. He made the cherubim of one piece with the atoning cover at the two ends. And the cherubim had their wings spread upward, covering the atoning cover with their wings, with their faces toward each other. The faces of the cherubim were toward the atoning cover. Then he made the table of acacia wood, two cubits long a cubit wide, and one and a half cubits high. He overlaid it with pure gold, and made a gold molding for it all around. And he made a rim for it of a hand width all around, and made a gold molding for its rim all around. He also cast four gold rings for it and put the rings on the four corners that were on its four legs. Close by the rim were the rings, the holders for the poles to carry the table. And he made the poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold, to carry the table. He also made the utensils which were on the table, its dishes, its pans, 
its libation bowls, and its jars, with which to pour out drink offerings, of pure gold. Then he made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand of hammerwork, its base and its shaft. Its cups, its bulbs, and its flowers were of one piece with it. There were six branches going out of its sides. Three branches of the lamp stand from the one side of it and three branches of the lamp stand from the other side of it. Three cups shaped like almond blossoms, a bulb and a flower on one branch, and three cups shaped like almond blossoms, a bulb and a flower on the other branch, so for the six branches going out of the lamp stand. And on the lamp stand there were four cups shaped like almond blossoms, its bulbs and its flowers. And a bulb was under the first pair of branches coming out of it and a bulb under the second pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb under the third pair of branches coming out of it, for the six branches coming out of the lampstand. Their bulbs and their branches were of one piece with it. The whole of it was a single hammered work of pure gold. And he made its seven lamps with its tongs and its trays of pure gold. He made it and all its utensils from a talent of pure gold. Then he made the altar of incense of acacia wood, a cubit long and a cubit wide, square, and two cubits high. Its horns were of one piece with it. And he overlaid it with pure gold, its top and its sides all around, and its horns. And he made a gold molding for it all around. He also made two golden rings for it under its molding, on its two sides, on opposite sides, as holders for poles with which to carry it. And he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made the holy anointing oil and the pure, fragrant incense of spices, the work of a perfumer the tabernacle completed. Then he made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, five cubits long, and five cubits wide, square, and three cubits high. And he made its horns on its four corners, its horns being of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He also made all the utensils of the altar, the pails, the shovels, the basins, the meat forks, and the fiery pans. He made all its utensils of bronze. And he made for the altar a grating of bronze netting beneath, under its ledge, reaching halfway up. He also cast four rings on the four ends of the bronze grating as holders for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. Then he inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar, with which to carry it. He made it hollow with planks. Moreover, he made the basin of bronze with its base of bronze, from the mirrors of the serving women who served at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Then he made the courtyard, for the south side the hangings of the courtyard were of fine twisted linen a hundred cubits. Their twenty pillars, and their twenty bases, were made of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were of silver. For the north side there were a hundred cubits. Their twenty pillars and their twenty bases were of bronze, the hooks of the pillars and their bands were of silver. For the west side there were hangings of fifty cubits with their ten pillars and their ten bases. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were of silver. For the east side, fifty cubits. The hangings for the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits with their three pillars and their three bases, and so for the other side. On both sides of the gate of the courtyard were hangings of fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three bases. All the hangings of the courtyard all around were of fine twisted linen. And the bases for the pillars were of bronze, the hooks of the pillars and their bands, of silver. And the overlaying of their tops, of silver, and all the pillars of the courtyard were furnished with silver bands. Now the curtain of the gate of the courtyard was the work of the weaver, a violet purple, and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. And the length was twenty cubits and the height was five cubits, corresponding to the hangings of the courtyard. Their four pillars and their four bases were of bronze. Their hooks were of silver, and the overlaying of their tops and their bands were of silver. All the pegs of the tabernacle and of the courtyard all around were of bronze. The cost of the tabernacle. This is the number of the things for the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the testimony as they were counted according to the command of Moses. For the service of the Levites, by the hand of Itamar the son of Aaron the priest. Now Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Ha, of the tribe of Judah, made everything that the Lord had commanded Moses. With him was Ooliab the son of Isamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a skilled embroiderer, and a weaver in violet, in purple, and in scarlet material, and fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work, in all the work of the sanctuary, which was the gold of the wave offering, was twenty-nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of those of the congregation who were counted was a hundred talents and seventeen seventy-five shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A becker ahead that is, 
half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary, assessed to each one who passed over to those who were counted, from twenty years old and upward, for six hundred and three thousand five hundred and fifty men. The hundred talents of silver were used for casting the bases of the sanctuary and the bases of the veil. A hundred bases for the hundred talents, a talent for a base. And of the seventeen seventy-five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars, and overlaid their tops and made bands for them. And the bronze of the wave offering was seventy talents and two thousand four hundred shekels. With it he made the bases to the doorway of the tent of meeting, and the bronze altar and its bronze grating, and all the utensils of the altar, and the bases of the courtyard all around and the bases of the gate of the courtyard, and all the pegs of the tabernacle and all the pegs of the courtyard all around the priestly garments. Now from the violet, purple, and scarlet material they made finely woven garments for ministering in the holy place, as well as the holy garments which were for Aaron. Just as the Lord had commanded Moses, he made the ephod of gold and the violet, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. Then they hammered out gold sheets and cut them into threads to be woven in with the violet, the purple, and the scarlet material, and the fine linen, the work of a skilled embroiderer. They made attaching shoulder pieces for the ephod. It was attached at its two upper ends. And the skillfully woven band of its overlay which was on it was like its workmanship, of the same material, of gold and the violet, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They also made the onyx stones, set in gold filigree settings. They were engraved like the engravings of a signet, according to the names of the sons of Israel. And he placed them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he made the breast piece, the work of a skilled embroiderer, like the workmanship of the ephod, of gold and the violet, purple, and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. It was square. They made the breast piece folded double, a span long and a span wide when folded double. And they mounted four rows of stones on it. The first row was a row of ruby, topaz, an emerald. And the second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were set in gold filigree settings when they were mounted. The stones corresponded to the names of the sons of Israel. They were twelve, corresponding to their names, engraved with the engravings of a signet, each with each name for the twelve tribes. And they made for the breast piece chains like cords, work of twisted cords of pure gold. They made two gold filigree settings and two gold rings, and put the two rings on the two ends of the breast piece. Then they put the two gold cords in the two rings at the ends of the breast piece. And they put the other two ends of the two cords on the two filigree settings, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front of it. They made two gold rings and placed them on the two ends of the breast piece, on its inner edge which was next to the ephod. Furthermore, they made two gold rings and placed them on the bottom of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod, on the front of it, close to the place where it joined, above the woven band of the ephod. And they bound the breast piece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a violet cord, so that it would be on the woven band of the ephod and that the breast piece would not come loose from the ephod, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of violet. And the opening of the robe was at the top in the center, as the opening of a coat of mail, with a binding all around its opening, so that it would not be torn. And they made pomegranates of violet, purple, and scarlet material and twisted linen on the hem of the robe. They also made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates all around on the hem of the robe alternating a bell and a pomegranate all around on the hem of the robe for the service, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They also made the tunics of finely woven linen for Aaron and his sons, and the turban of fine linen, and the decorated caps of fine linen, and the linen undergarments of fine twisted linen, and the sash of fine twisted linen, and violet, purple, and scarlet material, the work of the weaver, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They also made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and inscribed it like the engravings of a signet, holy to the Lord. Then they fastened a violet cord to it, to fasten it on the turban above, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. So all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was completed. And the sons of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So they did. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its bases. And the covering of ram's skins dyed red, and the covering of fine leather, and the covering curtain. The ark of the testimony, its poles, and the atoning cover. 
the table, all its utensils, and the bread of the presence. The pure gold lamp stand, with its arrangement of lamps and all its utensils, and the oil for the light. And the gold altar, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, and the curtain for the doorway of the tent. The bronze altar and its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stand. The hangings for the courtyard, its pillars and its bases, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard, its ropes and its pegs, and all the equipment for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting. The woven garments for ministering in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons, to serve as priests. So the sons of Israel did all the work according to everything that the Lord had commanded Moses. And Moses examined all the work, and behold, they had done it. Just as the Lord had commanded, this they had done. So Moses blessed them, the tabernacle erected. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall place the ark of the testimony there, and you shall screen off the ark with the veil. Then you shall bring in the table and arrange what belongs on it. And you shall bring in the lampstand and mount its lamps. You shall also set the gold altar of incense in front of the ark of the testimony, and set up the curtain for the doorway to the tabernacle. And you shall set the altar of burnt offering in front of the doorway of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. Then you shall set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. You shall also set up the courtyard all around and hang up the curtain for the gate of the courtyard. Then you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything that is in it, and consecrate it and all its furnishings. And it shall be holy. You shall also anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, and consecrate the altar and the altar shall be most holy. And you shall anoint the basin and its stand, and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the doorway of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. And you shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him, so that he may serve as a priest to me. You shall also bring his sons and put tunics on them. And you shall anoint them just as you have anointed their father, so that they may serve as priests to me. And their anointing will qualify them for a permanent priesthood throughout their generations. So Moses did these things. According to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. Now in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle and laid its bases, and set up its boards, and inserted its bars, and erected its pillars. And he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on top of it, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he took the testimony and put it into the ark, and attached the poles to the ark, and put the atoning cover on top of the ark. He then brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up a veil for the covering, and screened off the ark of the testimony, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He also put the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil. And he set the arrangement of bread in order on it before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he placed the lamp stand in the tent of meeting, opposite the table, on the south side of the tabernacle. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the veil. And he burnt fragrant incense on it, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he set up the curtain for the doorway of the tabernacle. And he set the altar of burnt offering in front of the doorway of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offering and the meal offering, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it for washing. From it Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they entered the tent of meeting, and when they approached the altar, they washed, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he erected the courtyard all around the tabernacle and the altar, and hung up the curtain for the gate of the courtyard. So Moses finished the work. The glory of the Lord. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day when it was taken up. For throughout their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel.